everybody. In this video, we're going to be creating some ASCII imaging, A-S-C-I-I -I imaging, which is an artistic technique which employs the creation of images using computer display characters, alphanumeric characters and symbols. The characters would represent the pixels of the image and the brighter and bolder characters would create brighter pixels. I'm going to recreate this effect with this texture atlas over here. I have eight frames to this atlas. The furthest on the left is black and the furthest on the right is white with six steps in between. The characters are smaller and thinner to represent a smaller contribution of white and the final one being the largest and boldest with the highest contribution of white to the overall color. To recreate this effect in Blender, I'm going to use the familiar Atlas setup, which we have used before. The Matrix Code Rain effect and other materials use the same technique. I'll add a texture node and choose my character Atlas. Let's have a preview. And there it is. It's scaled poorly. I'm going to make a little more room over to the left, and I'll drive the texture Atlas with the normalized output. Drop on some vector math nodes. First one will set to multiply. And if you remember, I said there are eight cells to the atlas. So I'll type in one divided by eight for X and I'll enter one for Y. I'm also going to set the texture interpolation mode of the texture atlas to closest to avoid the borders. Duplicate this vector math node and set the operation to snap. We're going to use the random color in the top. And we'll add these two vector math nodes together. And there we go. We have a familiar randomly selected character grid. But in this example, we're not going to be selecting the cells or the frames of our atlas randomly. We're going to use an image and more to the point, the brightness of the pixels of that image to choose this X offset right here, which I can do by hand if I wish. So let's go about doing that. We'll get another image node and choose a photograph. Let me show you the original image. That's it. I'll go back to previewing the Atlas output. Now then we're going to use the stepped output to drive this texture Atlas. And I'm also going to set the color space to non-color. As we're using the stepped output, I'll turn step correct on. Let's see what we're getting. Once again, set texture interpolation to closest. There we go. Now I'm going to separate, or more to the point, I'm going to convert this color into a value with a converter separate HSV node, because in this case, I want the value or the luminosity or brightness of the pixels. And now I can change that single value into a vector. I'm going to plug the value into the X channel. And this vector goes into the top of my snap node. And you can see something starting to happen here. We'll come over to the UV grid and reduce the sizes. One, zero, two. And there you go. You can see the details of the image coming through based on the choice of frame of the atlas, which gets drawn. Let's try some different images, different photographs. I'm going to change the sizes and make the pixels rectangular instead of square. Let's go for 0.012 and 0.018, for example. There we go. We get plenty of detail. Try a different image. Okay. Now the effect can be expanded upon a little bit by using a slightly different atlas or more to the point by using more atlases. If we take a number of strips exactly like this one using different characters, but with the same arrangement, the darkest on the left and the brightest on the right, for example, this one, we can maintain the same effects in the sense that the choice of pixel will still be based on the brightness of the image underlying. But we can avoid this patching effect, which can, to a certain extent can be desirable. It's almost like a cell shaded effect where there are definite patches of similar characters being displayed. It makes them stand out a little bit. If you want to break that up, you can use several different atlas strips like this one, combine them all into one atlas, and we'll plug that into our material and see what we get. I'll choose the multi strip. And now I have to change my sizes. Let's have another look at that atlas. 
Okay, we have seven vertically and nine horizontally. So let's set up our vector math nodes here. That'll be one divided by nine and one divided by seven. Now we can take our random color. We're going to split it apart in the usual way with a separate RGB. Drag that over here and choose the color channel you like best and simply plug it into this Y. There you go. You get a randomly chosen strip of characters and then the correct character chosen to represent the brightness of the underlying pixel. Very, very nice. If you want to introduce the color of the underlying image as well, we can make a duplicate of the texture because we're going to set one to sRGB in the color space and one in non-color, so we'll need some duplicates. I'm going to duplicate the non-color one here and the original I'll set to sRGB. Let's come over here. First, I'm going to change this color into a value the usual way with a separate. Now we'll get a color mix node. Mix RGB. This will be my mix factor. This texture node goes into the bottom of the mix and this will be my background color. So I'll set that to something dark and let's preview that. And there you go. If you want to brighten up that color, I'll drag everything over to the left a little bit. Duplicate the mix RGB and drop it onto the output noodle. Set the operation to divide and choose a very dark color, but avoid zero here. Now you can control the brightness of the characters and blow them out a little bit. Speaking of blowing out, you'll see these dead pixels here. Let's say to avoid this clipping happening, we just need to reduce this value output by the tiniest amount, literally the tiniest amount. Use a math node set to multiply and we'll multiply by 0.9999. Drop that onto the value output and the looping pixels are gone. The dead pixels are gone. And there you go. That's how you do ASCII art in a shader in Blender. And if you want to change the characters, all you have to do is to make a new atlas and the shader will do everything else for you. Just remember to keep your sizes correct, depending on the number of available frames in the atlas in these two vector math nodes right here. And of course, let's not forget if it works for images, it'll work for an image sequence. I'm going to get rid of the color channel just for this time. And I'll replace this with an image sequence. Set cyclic and auto refresh to on, hit play, and there you got your video playing. Animated ASCII art. How can you say no? Let's fix the scaling one second. Vector math. Multiply by one for no change, and 1080 divided by 1920 for the correct scale. Duplicate that, set it to subtract, and correct the offset. Very, very nice. I think that'll do it for this video. It's been a quick one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.